Would you like to make your Excel formulas easy to understand? In this regard, Excel's Define Name feature is a great tool that you can utilize to interpret formulas easily. Hello everyone, welcome to Excel Demi, your day-to-day -day Excel and VPA tutorial helpline. This is Hadiul Bashar, and today I will demonstrate how to create a formula using defined names in Excel. For this video, I will use Microsoft Excel 365. Let's quickly refresh our idea about the defined names. In general, a defined name refers to a single cell or range of cells. Hence, you can use the defined name in formulas to perform your calculations related to those cells. You can perform mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication using defined names. In this example, I will show you how to apply multiplication using defined names. So first of all, let's talk about the data set. We have a sales data. This includes the item name, the unit price, and the quantity sold. Now I will define names for the unit price and quantity, and using those names, I will calculate the sales amount. So first of all, I will define the name for unit price, so select the cells C5 to C13, then move to the formulas tab. From the defined names section, click on define name. This opens the new name window. In the name field, I will define a name that will refer to the unit price. So, in the name field, I will type unit price. One thing I should mention here that you cannot leave a space between two words in the name field. This is why I have used an underscore between unit and price. Next, you can choose the scope of the named range. You can click on this drop down icon and select the worksheet where this named range will be available. In my case, I will apply this named range to the entire workbook. So the default option workbook is perfect for my case. Then you can add comment if you need. However, I will leave this field blank. Next, in the refers to field, you will find the cell address that will be referred by the name unit price. In this case, the unit price refers to the cells C5 to C13 of the worksheet multiplying named ranges. Now click on OK to create the named range. As a result, the name is applied to the selected cells. You can use the name manager option to view all the named range. For that reason, from the formulas tab, in the defined names section, click on the option name manager. Alternatively, you can press Ctrl plus F3 to open name manager window. This opens the name manager window. Here you will find the justly created named range. You can edit the named range by clicking on this edit button. You can even delete the named range by clicking on the delete button. Even you can create a new name from the name manager window by clicking on this new button as I will create a new name for the quantity column. So let me click on the new button and this opens the new name window. As I will define a name for the quantity column, so in the name field, let me type quantity. One thing I should mention here that you can set the name according to your choice. However, I have set the name quantity so that I can easily understand the meaning of the name. The scope of this name is this workbook. I need to change the value in the refers to field. For that reason, select the current value discard it and select the cells of the quantity that are cells D5 to D13. Now click on OK to create the new name. As a result, the name quantity is set. Now click on close to close the name manager. Now we are ready to calculate total sales using our defined names. The sales amount is the unit price multiplied by quantity. So to get the sales amount of the first item, go to cell E5 type equal. Now I will multiply the unit price by the quantity. So type unit price. Excel is displaying the newly created unit price name. Press tab to autocomplete the unit price. As a result, you can see that the sales of the unit price column is highlighted. Now multiply this unit price by quantity. So type quantity and you will find quantity in the screen tip. This is the name we have created. Now press tab to autocomplete the quantity and hit enter. As a result, you can see that the sales figures of all the items are calculated instantly. And to calculate the sales figures, I have used the defined names, unit price and quantity. One thing I should mention here that I am using the Excel 365 version. So by simply pressing the enter key, I have got all the sales figures. That is the array formula has worked by simply pressing the enter key. However, in the older versions of Excel, you must press Ctrl, Shift and Enter keys together to use the array formula. In this way, you can use defined names to get the sales amount. 
you can also use defined names in Excel functions. Hence, you do not need to enter the cell references which simplifies formulas and makes them easier to interpret. For example, I will calculate the total sales amount of all the items using a defined names. So first of all, I will define the name of the sales in the sales column and then use that name in the sum function to get the total sales. So to create the name for the sales column, select the sales of the sales column that are sales E5 to E13. Then press Ctrl plus F3 to open the name manager window. This opens the name manager window. To create the new name, choose the option new. This opens the new name window in the name field as the name will refer to the sales of the sales column. So in the name field type sales and the scope of this name is this workbook that is you can use the sales name in all the worksheets of this workbook. Now click on OK to create the name. As a result, the name sales is created. Now click on close to close the name manager window. We are ready to calculate the total sales. So go to the cell C15, type equal. I'll use the sum function to get the total sales. So type sum. The sum function returns the summation of your selected range of cells. As the number one argument of the sum function, instead of selecting all the cells from the sales column, I'll type the name that I've just created. So type the name sales and you can see the name sales here. Press tab to autocomplete sales. As a result, you can see that all the sales of the sales column are highlighted. Now close the parentheses of the sum function and hit enter. This returns the total sales of all the items. In this way, you can use the named range as the argument of a function. In this example, I will use the counter function and the defined name to count the number of items in this data set. So first of all, let's set a name to indicate the cells of the item column. So select the cells B5 to B13. Then press Ctrl and F3 and this opens the name manager window. As I will create a new name, so choose the option new. And this opens the new name window. As I will create a name to indicate the cells of the item column. So in the name field, type the name as item names. As I have mentioned earlier, you can't leave a space between two words in the name field. So I have used an underscore here. Now the scope of this name is this workbook. Finally, to create the name, click on OK. As a result, the item names is created. Finally, click on close to close the name manager. Now we are ready to use the newly created item names and by using the name, I will count the number of items in this list. So go to cell C15, type equal, I will use the counter function, so type counter. The counter function returns the number of non-empty cells from your selected range of cells. As the value 1 argument of the counter function, I will use the newly created name item names, so type item names. And you will find the item names here. Press tab to autocomplete the item names. And you can see all the cells of the item column are highlighted. Now close the parentheses of the counter function and hit enter. And this returns 9. This means there are 9 items in the item column. In this way, you can use a defined name to count the number of items. In this example, I'll count the number of items that meet a certain condition. And the condition is that the unit price of the item will be greater than $1.5. To count the number of such items, I will use the previously defined named range as the argument of the count if function. To get a view of the previously defined named ranges, let me open the name manager by pressing Ctrl plus F3. And this opens the name manager window. You will find all the created name ranges here as I will count the number of items based on the condition of unit price. So I will use the named range unit price. If you select the name unit price and click on the edit button, then you can see that the scope of this name is this workbook. This means you can use this name unit price in all the worksheets of this workbook. Now click on OK to close the edit name window. Finally, click on close to close the name manager window. Now, I will apply the formula in cell D15. So go to cell D15, type equal, count if. The count if function counts the number of cells from a range of cells that meet a certain condition. As a range argument of the count if function, type the already created name unit price. You can see the name unit price here. Press tab to autocomplete unit price. Place a comma as a criteria argument as I will search for the cells that contain the value greater than 1.5. So type greater than 1.5 within double quotes. 
Now close the parentheses of the countif function. Now let me briefly explain this formula to you. This formula will count the number of cells that contain the value greater than 1.5 in the unit price name. And the unit price name refers to the cells C5 to C13 that includes all the unit prices. Now hit enter to get the result. And you can see the formula has returned 4. This means there are 4 items which unit prices are greater than $1.5. If you look at the list, you can spot the unit prices. Here, the unit price is $2, which is greater than $1.5. Next, the unit price of watermelon is $1.6. The next value that meets the condition is $1.8. And finally, the unit price of peers is $3.2 that satisfies the condition. In this way, you can use the named range and the countif function to count the number of cells that meet a certain condition. In this example, I'll count the number of items that meet two conditions. And the conditions are the quantity of the item should be greater than 15 as well as the unit price will be greater than $1.1 at the same time. To get the number of such items, I'll use the previously created named ranges as the arguments of the countifs function. So go to cell D15, type equal countifs. The countifs function counts the number of cells from a range of cells that meet multiple conditions. As the criteria range 1 argument of the countifs function, type the named range quantity, press tab to autocomplete quantity, place a comma. As the criteria 1 argument, type greater than 15 within double quotes, place a comma. As the criteria range 2 argument, type the named range unit price. Press tab to autocomplete unit price. Place a comma as the criteria 2 argument. Type greater than 1.1 within double quotes. Now close the parentheses of the countifs function. Now let me briefly explain this formula to you. This countifs function returns the number of cells that meets the two conditions specified here. And the first condition is the quantity number will be greater than 15. And the second condition is the unit price will be greater than 1.1. Now hit enter to get the result. And this returns 2. This means there are 2 instances where the item meets the 2 conditions. If you look at the data set, you can see that the item Apple meets the 2 conditions. Here the quantity is 20 and the unit price is 1.2 which is greater than $1.1. And then the item Orange has the unit price $1.4 and the quantity is 24. And these 2 items meet both the conditions in this data set. In this example, I will use our created named range along with the if and countif functions to check the availability status and in the item list. If the items from the search list is found in the item list, then the status will be available, otherwise it will be unavailable. Now, to check the status of the first item, go to cell C16, type equal, if. The if function checks whether a condition is true or not and returns value based on this condition. As a logical test argument of the if function, I will use the countif function. As a range argument of the countif function, I will use the named range item names that I have previously created. You'll find the name item names here. Press tab to autocomplete item names. Place a comma as the criteria argument. Select the cell B16, that is the item we will search for in the item names. Now close the parentheses of the countif function. Place a comma as the value of true argument. Type available within double quotes. Place a comma as the value of false argument. Type unavailable. Close the parentheses of the if function. Now I will explain this formula. Here the countif function will search for the value of cell B16, that is Kiwi, in the item names name tree. Range, that is in the cells B5 to B13 and if the match is found then the if function will return available otherwise this if function will return unavailable. Now hit enter to get the status of Kiwi and we can see as Kiwi is not available in this item list so the status is unavailable. Now let me use the fill handle to get the status of the next item in the search list and you can see that as cantaloupe is there the item list so the status is available. In this way you can check the status of the items in the data set. In this example, I will show you the process of getting the total sales of a certain item using a combination of the if, index, and the match function along with our created named range. For example, I want to get the total sales value of the item watermelon from this list. 
Now, instead of going through all the items to get the total sales of watermelon, I will use a formula to get the value instantly. So, go to cell D16, type equal if. As a logical test argument of the if function, I will use the countif function. As a range argument of the countif function, I will search for the name in the item name's named range that represents the cells B5 to B13. So, type the name item names. You will find the item names here. Press tab to autocomplete item names. Place a comma as the criteria argument. I will select the cell B16 that contains the item name watermelon. Now close the parenthesis of the countif function, place a comma as a value of true argument of the if function, I will use a combination of index and match functions to get the unit price of the item from the unit price list. So type the index function. The index function returns the cell value of a specified row and column from a range of cells. Press tab to autocomplete the index function. You can see there are two variations of the index function. In this case, I will use the first one. So, as the array argument of the index function, as I will search for the unit price of the item from the unit price column. So, type the name unit price. You can see our created name unit price here. Press tab to autocomplete unit price. Place a comma as the row number argument of the index function. I will use a match function. The match function returns the relative serial number of an item from a range of cells. Now press tab to autocomplete the match function. As the lookup value argument of the match function, select the cell B16. Now place a comma as the lookup array argument. Type our defined name, the item names. Press tab to autocomplete item names. Place a comma as the match type argument as I want an exit match. So type 0. Now close the parenthesis of the match function. Then close the parenthesis of the index function. Now this combination of the index and the match functions will return the unit price of the item from the unit price column. Similarly, to get the total sales value, I need to multiply this unit price with the total quantity. So to get the total quantity, I will use a combination of the index and match functions in a similar fashion. So multiply the unit price and type the index function as the array argument of the second index function. This time, as I want to get the quantity number, so type the name of quantity. You will find the quantity name here. Press tab to autocomplete the name. Place a comma as the row number argument of the index function. Type the match function again. Press tab to autocomplete the match function. As a lookup value argument, select the cell B16, place a comma. As a lookup array argument of the second match function, type the name item names, press tab to autocomplete item names, place a comma. As the match type argument, type 0 for exit match, close the parenthesis of the match function, close the parenthesis of the index function, now place a comma. As the value if false argument, I want the if function to return a blank value, so type double quotes and close the parenthesis of the if function. Now, let me briefly explain this formula to you. First of all, the countif function will search for the item name that is in cell B16 in the item name's named range. And the item name's named range represents the cells B5 to B13. And if the match is found, then the if function will calculate the total sales value of the item in cell B16. And the total sales value is the unit price times the quantity. Now, to get the unit price of the item, I have used a combination of the index and match functions. Similarly, I have used another set of index and match functions to get the quantity number of the certain item. Here, the match function will search for the cell value of cell B16, that is watermelon, in the item name's named range, that is the list of the items. And if the match is found, the match function returns the corresponding row number where the match is found. And as the item name and the corresponding unit price and quantity are in the same row. So, this row number is used to get the unit price from the unit price defined names and the quantity number from the quantity named range. And these two values are multiplied to get the total sales amount. And if a match is not found in the first place, then the if function returns a blank value. Now, hit enter to get the total sales 
of the item watermelon from this data set and you can see this formula has returned 8 which matches with the total sales value in the data set. I have demonstrated the step by step guide for creating a formula using defined names in Excel. Hopefully you can apply this knowledge according to your requirements and convenience. You can download the practice workbook from the video description to sharpen your Excel skills. Feel free to leave any questions, suggestions or feedback in the comment section below. You can go to exceldemy.com to read our Excel blogs or you can share your Excel related issues in our Excel Demi forum and receive free solutions. For more content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching our video. Bye.